This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 216, recorded on May 28, 2015. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. And of course, we post this show each week with world class show notes out at theaverageguy.tv. If you have questions, comments, or contributions, you can send us an email. That's the old way of doing it, but that's okay. Jim at theaverageguy.tv will get us there. Track me down on Twitter at Jay Collison, or now you can call in those questions if you really want to be old school. 402-478-8450. You can also record those. Neil did that this week. He just recorded them off his phone, shot them over to me via email, and those work great to get to me nice and clear. Sometimes calling in on Google Voice isn't the clearest thing in the world. So if you want to do that, it'd be great. 402-478-8450, and we will get to that feedback as we can. I want to remind you that the average guy.tv is powered by Maple Grove Partners Web Hosting. Of course, get secure, reliable, super high speed. Uh, web hosting from people that you know and trust. That's Christian. You know him. And uh, he's got some spots open in his hosting plan for you. It starts at 10 bucks. And uh, we want to thank Ma- Maple Grove Partners for hosting us. That's just maplegrovepartners.com. And we also want to thank Roger over at WLM LMN Radio in Grafton, West Virginia. We are not live streaming there, but we will be broadcasting out there now uh, on a daily basis. And so still haven't heard from anybody in Grafton, but if uh, if you're listening out there, we'd love to have you come back in. Always, uh, Mike, always interesting to me to go out on terrestrial radio. We kind of come full circle, haven't we? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's It was kind of the big part for me. Like, oh, sweet, we're now on radio. We've made the whole, covered yeah. the whole gamut. So it's a lot of fun. And then, of course, Home Gadget Geeks is a part of the Geeks Network. You can find the link to this show and many other great podcasts, and even Mike's when we get his album art in and working, out at thegeeksnetwork.com. You can join us in chat, watch or listen live on YouTube, on Spreaker. And we're back on Mixler, so if you want to listen to us over there, that's just such a better streaming service. Uh, we added them back into the mix. All the ad navigation you'd ever need, including brand new live pages. We'll talk about those here at the end of the show out at theaverageguy.tv. All right, we've been talking about this show for a while. It's taken me a little bit of time to get the folks from Clamor back in here, but Parviz from Clamor is here. Parviz, thanks for taking a few minutes tonight to come in here and be a part of what we're doing with Home Gadget Geeks. Thanks so much, uh, Jim, Mike. Great to be with you guys. Yeah, let's let's dig right in. I've been talking a lot in the shows about Clamor. We have especially been talking about it from a podcasting perspective. This isn't a show for podcasters, so to speak. So I want to be sure. real careful. We'll talk about some of the features that are available for podcasters, but I do want to ha- highlight, I've listened to a lot of the interviews that you've done. A lot of them have been very podcasting-centric. Sure. 99% of my audience is the average guy who just consumes sure. tech, right? So we're going to we're going to I want to take it from a little bit of a different angle tonight. We're still going to cover the podcasting stuff, yeah. but we're gonna, if uh, why don't you give me your first a little bit about you? We'd like to know just a little bit about you before you get started and then your 2-minute elevator speech on Clamor. What do you tell people? What is it? You know, why should people use it that kind of stuff? Sure. Uh, so a little about me. I'm part of a four-person founding team at Clamor. Um, and I think the most salient thing folks may want to know about me is I'm a massive nerd. Uh, I, I'm a self, self-educator. I love learning things myself for myself. And, um, you know, one of my co-founders who really it sprung out of a conversation we had and out of his forehead, he's also similar. And we met many years ago in law school, funny enough. We're both non we, we both were part of the uh, law school emissions reduction program, so we never practiced law. We both took the bar, passed it, and took uh, the lawyer emissions pledge and decided to not uh, emit any more lawyers and uh, took on other careers. But ironically, the reason I brought up law school is we're both slow readers, um, and so we both love audio also because it's um, you can you can kind of multitask with it. So a big audio book users. Um, also, I kind of listen to the whole Economist every week in audio and podcasts, and we found we were often exchanging stuff in an inefficient way. Like he'd rip a whole audio book, put it in Dropbox, just to tell me about a chapter I should read about, uh, you know, I should listen on the Heath Brothers, right? And um, I'd send him a link to something from NPR. There was a link he had to pop up, etc. So I think that's a, the thing that's maybe the most interesting to know about me is it came from a place of being a big audio user. Um, 
and and, a, and really kind of a personal relationship with one of my co-founders of how we were using audio that Clamor popped out of our heads. So maybe I'll go to just say what is Clamor, the you know two-minute thing, which is um, Clamor is a bite-sized audio platform. Um, a lot of early users are calling it audio Instagram or audio Twitter. That's a pretty good summary. It's a continuous stream of short audio clips that are capped at 18 seconds and personalized to um, your interests. So you press play and you get a stream of these short audio clips that can keep playing as a power feed if you want them to and also have links to more content. Typically it's a hear more button that actually launches full audio as part of the stream and comes back to the short stuff when that thing is done but also can pop up a YouTube video, can pop up an article, can even pop up another app. Um, we see a number of speaker users do, using it that way. Um, and so it's a great way to get this power feed and it's also a great way to discover great audio content in a browsing type manner. Um, our real goals were to make audio more discoverable and social, um, shareable, uh, because we think those are real challenges in audio today. All right, I, I can't pass it up. You hit on about eight things that Mike are doing over there. So, Mike, you, Mike, you got to be dying. This sounds like you, right? I mean, I would well, hope so. At some point, I mean, that would be my exact goal. But yeah, I'm in law school right now too, and cool. I was a tech guy before into business and decided to go into law, but have total plans to maybe possibly not even go into practice, but go into something with technology in that field. So it's just, yeah, I love the story. That's right up my alley. Right. Um, and I mean, I think a lot of people were very knowledge oriented in law school. You think, oh, people read all the time. And you know, again, my case and Dave's case were actually slow readers, funny enough. But um, I am too. Because <laughs> from a place of being careful, partly. Um, and then, um, and, uh, and so the, it almost feels like cheating audio because you can you just get this information when during times, especially when you wouldn't do it. And it's a great pacer, too. It just forces you to keep going as opposed to drifting off or whatever. Um, so, yeah, and, and Jim, you started off the conversation saying, you know, this is more average guy oriented. And really, there's a creation aspect to Clamor, which we can dive into. But really, the listener aspect is that aspect around getting information in these short nuggets. Um, and often with news or other information, just getting that little bit is enough. Um, one thing for tech folks, we actually went heavy on tech um, as a starting point, as a default. So there's a tech news channel that is major headlines from TechCrunch, VentureBeat, Wired, Gizmodo. And you know, in a matter of a few minutes every morning, you can get really up to speed. We've teamed up with TechCrunch. They've actually uh, posted a, a Clamor widget to the top of their Tumblr feed. Uh, it's something you could press. I think they've had a few posts since then. It's gone down. Um, but, um, you know, you just press it, and on their Tumblr feed, you can listen to all the TechCrunch headlines. Um, and so that's for the average guy, average listener. Um, it's just something that can be really additive to your life as part of a morning routine. Um, there are four hours a day, if you look at census data, where structurally we can't consume visual media. Um, and, you know, morning routine drive time, housework, shopping, those actually add up to four hours. Um, and this, and often, yeah, you can tee up a podcast, et cetera, but there are so many podcasts and you kind of have to plan for them that this is a nice way to get a power feed and also get highlights where you say, you know what, I want to dive into that episode um, and, and jump right in from there. So those are two big uses, that information use and then that, let me just grab the best highlights so I can figure out what I want to listen to at the right time. Yeah, when Jim was telling me about the whole Clamor idea and what it was, mm -hmm. I got on there and started listening because it intrigued me because, like you said, that four hours of the day that you can't do visual stuff, that's exactly the problem I ran into in law school. So I started putting any PDF that our professor would send, I would put it, scan it into a voice to text, and then listen to it in the car on my way sure. to school because you're just wasting time. If not, you might as well be using that time. Totally. So got, the Clamor thing just made perfect sense. And when I got on there, the thing I liked about it was just mm -hmm. that it kept going. 
through various right. people. It didn't follow the same person. When you click on that channel, it just kept going through all these different sources, and I loved it. I was like, this instantly hooked. I could listen to it all the way to work, and, and like cool. you said, within a few minutes, you're up to date on a lot of different news that you would have had to either read or listen to maybe a longer show on uh, right. before, so it was great. And there are a couple things, I'll, and, and I think Jim was going to jump in, I'll, I'll just say about um, that are kind of these power user things. There are a lot of... We, I have to admit, we, we went against the startup advice of uh, we over-featured it a little bit um, because we couldn't help ourselves. So there are some hidden things that as you use it more, there's a customization aspect so you can mute sources in channels and just get the ones you want. You can create your own channels, which are just combinations of accounts you want. So like, let's say you want tech news and a little bit of celebrity or some, we have ABA legal news, for example. You can combine those in a channel. Um, uh, which which can which can often be helpful as well in terms of um, really customizing it to to be useful to you. Parviz, let me back up a smidge just because uh -huh. all of a sudden everybody's like, all right, how do I get to this right sure. from that standpoint? Because my guys, they're going to want to try this real real sure. quick. Right now, iPhone only is that is it is that still the case? And when's Android and when's Windows Phone? Sure, um, we are iPhone only um, right now, and so you go to the iOS store download. Um, we're, our next thing that we're working on, it'll be out end of spring, or actually maybe a little earlier than that, so more like a few weeks, is a mobile responsive web version of Clamor that will have really all the functionality that, um, that we have right now. For folks who have a little bit of patience and want to withhold some judgment, um, we have a publisher portal right now a web-based portal, it's at publisher.clamor.com. That's Clamor without the vowel at the end, so it's C-L-A-M-M-R.com. That's primarily intended for folks who want to post content. Uh, you know, if they want to have a bit of a workflow where they put up a bunch of MP3s and there's a scheduler in there that lets them post, you know, a hundred of them and have them go out daily a few. But that also has on it um, the baseline channels. Uh, you can't create your own channels, but you can have a listening experience there where you could sign up and subscribe to the news or other channel um, and then listen to those. It doesn't have the social and customization features, but right now Android and Windows users can even just use that to get a sense of that stream at least of content. Um, uh, and so Jim, uh, we'll, we'll work on the web-based version first and then um, release uh, Android after that. Yeah, you pulled it up right there, and that's what it looks like. It's a set of tiles, and you press any one of them, and you play that channel. Um, those channels are various, those tiles are various channels on Clamor. So you can't create your own and do some of the social sharing that's kind of really integral to Clamor, but you can do the listening part. Um, another option that I'll throw out, we made Clamor uh, an open platform. So every Clamor is an open embeddable object. Uh, that's a bunch of words, but basically, you can take any clamor, or any or any any account or any channel, and embed that account or channel onto a web page. So onto a WordPress site, onto Tumblr, and we simply on the open internet have a a page where you can generate the embed code for accounts and channels. So folks can actually um, just stick. Uh, any widget up that they want to share with others too. If, if, you, if you just have a home page and you don't want to go to Clamor, you can just stick one of these widgets that Jim is showing here um, and you can go to that tool Jim just pulled up that's the widget maker. You choose the flavor of widget. You can make a account, account channel, or search term widget and then the, choose the size and just generate it. And so you could even access your favorite Clamor stuff just off your own web experience um, without having to go on to Clamor properties uh, as it would be. Um, that search widget is a little bit of a, takes a little explanation. It's pretty cool for those who are, um, want to be a little more advanced. Basically, uh, you can pick any search term or hashtag and if you look, so if you search for it in Clamor, you just get a virtual channel of everything live that's being posted with that search term. So if somebody cares about politics, they look for Clinton. Every clamor mentioning Clinton is going to show up in a continuous stream that goes forever. You can turn that into a widget too. So you could, for example, have a hashtag that you want to encourage people to post crazy clamors about, um, and then you could make a widget out of the hashtag. 
And those hashtags are the ones that you put into in the publisher or when you're creating a clamor. Those that's, hashtags. Okay. It's hashtags. That's right. It's a normal term that appears in the title, so any just term, or any hashtag that's in the description or the title is or the kind of really to get micro on that the, the rules. Yep. Yeah. And then let me show real quick. So that's what it looks like on the iPhone, and uh, a very similar. If you if you saw the screenshot before, a very similar. Really well designed. I mean, for for as new as it is, when yeah. I first looked at it, I'm like, wow, this this looks good. I mean, you guys spent a lot of time on design. Who's the Who's the design guru behind this? Is that you? So, you know, actually, um, one of my co-founders, Oren, Oren Goldfinger, um, who is that's an great. Was that great really name. his name? That's really his name. Of course, I have the ringtone. Of course, I have the Bond ringtone for him. Um, uh, I have to. Um, so I love getting calls from Warren because I get to listen to Goldfinger. Um, right. We're we're like comic book characters. I'm Parviz Parvizi. You know, we've got Oren Goldfinger um, uh, <laughs> as a team. But or Oren's extraordinary. Uh, he's our he's our um, front end developer and uh, see and our CTO, and um, he actually was at Cornerstone On Demand, um, which is LA's biggest publicly traded tech company, actually. Um, and they're, they're an HR SaaS software as a service company. And as part of their SaaS platform, they have a um, social network that's an internal social network. So like if a company wants an internal social network, it'll, it can use what um, Cornerstone is uh, sh providing them. And so he actually was the guy who created that. Um, and so we're, we really lucked out in the sense that he's the front-end developer, but he also has a real knack for design, um, even though he's doing all the coding too. And then Ken Ito, um, uh, a fourth member of the team, I had already mentioned David Silverman, Ken does the back-end development. Um, so that's, that's kind of the scoop there. So you met, you mentioned responsive design. I didn't catch the – I should have been listening, but I think I was flipping in between screens. Sure. Android, Android, yeah. Um, this year, uh, okay. I think I don't want to overpromise in terms of when in the year, but you know, one of it's it's one of these things where it was intentional. The iOS, mostly because of the um, just platform unity. Uh, Android has Android's beauty is it's so customizable, um, but with that, there's a lot of device heterogeneity. And for iOS, we knew okay, it has its X number of devices, but it's 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 just kind of a little more of a sandbox to play with um, and get the experience right um, before then we spread ourselves out. Um, so once the web version comes out, we'll be, which will be again in the coming weeks, um, we'll shift to Android development and that'll be you know, sometime this year before the end of the year. Um, and, but I hopefully really with the upgraded web version, um, I think Android d users will be quite happy with um, what they're going to get on the web. I might, I might even consider my Windows friends as well, just to Absolutely. use just to use the responsive app that you guys are making. We'll give that a try. I've got all, I've got all three here, so we'll give that uh, we'll try as well. When did you guys go live? So we 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 introduced ourselves to the public um, like three three weeks ago at NMX. Um, we were lurking before that. Um, you know, we had a password wall because um, Apple. You know the test flight limitations were too small, like a thousand users or whatever, and so um, we were lurking, and then we were doing really individual outreach. Um, you know, Jim, we kind of uh, luminary that you are, um, really, truly, for your you're listeners. Too, you're too kind. No, guys, I'll, I'll just say it. I'll, I'll just embarrass you for a minute, right? But um, it's we we were new to the podcast space, so we really tried to, um, or to the podcaster community, so we tried to approach it in a respectful way, where we were trying to just get to know. Folks, and then NMX, we're really there to learn about the community. And um, yeah, it's pretty obvious. There's a very small handful of people who always just keep coming up as uh, the Kevin Bacon's of uh, either connected or just the gurus, right? So, and you're one of them um, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was really so. We we kind of connected with you a little earlier. And, yeah, um, you did. Yeah. I appreciate that. You guys reached out. I I didn't know. You know, I just checked it out and said, oh, this is really cool. And mm -hmm. So we began talking about it, oh, maybe a week or so before New Media Expo, I, mm -hmm. I think is when I got my hands on it, and I thought this is, uh, this is a really interesting, you know, the what you've got going here. Mm -hmm. It does seem like in the last, I mean, you guys have made a pretty big splash, and I think, let's talk about yeah. your user base real fast. How many users are on there? I'm certainly, I'm getting 
a, a, a significant amount of likes and follows on yeah. that thing without really doing much work. So, right. um, yeah, how's that working? Well, that's one of the things about, um, uh, I think, when it's the content is is still growing, when people go there, they actually are more likely to just see your stuff quickly. Um, so uh, we're not releasing all of our metrics right now, you know, publicly, but the one I can share that gives you an indication is, um, you know, since our public introduction um, at NMX, we've had over 1,500 content creators, um, so it's not accounting for their audiences, things like that, uh, join Clamor and post their content on Clamor. So that's been great. Um, we really did, uh, the community of podcasters is such a open collaborative one that everybody really was uh, open to experimenting, open, open to giving us feedback um, and jumping on. Musicians have also really found Clamor quite interesting. You would, you know, if you went to something like Urban Music, uh, see a lot of interesting things happening there as well. Um, and, and, you know, I think folks go on and you, you know, it's one of these early days things. You, you know, you said you get a lot of plays and likes and sometimes you're just like, well, you know, what, what, like, does this person know me? And I think it, I'll, candidly, we are having just pe people just bump into stuff, you know, and it's less uh, often when media evolve, people get into their vertical silos, right? And so you'll have just the people who are certain demo who are tied to your show, and that's it. But right now, it's somewhat random people uh, kind of bumping into stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, no, as, as, a, like, as Mike and I are content creators, you know, we have Mike yeah. has his own podcast as well. We're always okay with people running into our content, right? Yeah. That's kind of what what we created for. In fact, I've I've started a new practice, you know, from a podcasting standpoint, what I started to do instead of just creating cuz when we first started, I would create one clamor and I would put it on there, you mm -hmm. know, after I published the show and I try and find the right time. And all of a sudden I realized, you know, I've got a bunch of audio in here and it won't take me that much longer to yeah. find seven 18 second clips than right. it would just one. Right. And so I've created seven unique uh, clamors and I and I put go to the publisher so publisher.clamor.com mm -hmm. and I have been loading those one a day and so then I put them in the scheduler and say mm -hmm. play this on Monday play this one on Tuesday play and I try to find funny ones that I think will will entice people to come in and, and mm -hmm. you know oh I want to hear more uh, and jump in and do that I assume that's okay I mean from your guys' standpoint are there any rules about how much I can upload and at some point would you be like hey enough um, yeah. And this is just me loading yeah. my own content. I know there's also tagging or creating clamors off of other people's content. Right, right. Um, I, it's we we don't we we're trying to really observe how the community uses it. Um, people can do whatever they want, whatever they want uh, within obviously legal constraints. But um, we right now the organizing paradigm is around channels, and most of these channels are ones that we manage where we add things to those channels like we featured you um, in, in one of the podcast channels right um, and so if somebody's doing something that we don't um, love the most we would do would just be to say look um, kind of find your own audience um, for the default channels not a great fit um, volume of content um, we don't we, we think the, the real key isn't the volume in terms of oh there's too much but um, how you spread that out. And the one practice that we try to give people hints on is um, not posting a bunch of stuff in a row, like five in a row. Um, and the reason for that is really two reasons. A, as a listener, you're partly listening to Clamor because you're getting these little bits and pieces. You don't want a continuous, if you wanted a continuous three minutes of somebody, you'd go in some other way and access them. So it kind of defeats the purpose, but also um, for the creators, you minimize, you reduce your chances of exposure to kind of new people because whoever's listening at that moment is going to hear, but these things are reverse chronological. So great, it's now gone down the stream and chances are people won't bump into it, random people won't bump into it. Um, so the one thing we tell people is publish a good bit, but um, you know, try to spread it out um, as opposed to bunching it up. Um, yeah. Em yeah. Emily was kind to me because I did that in the very beginning. Yeah, she, yeah, she's because I was used to just throwing stuff in a feed, right? Yeah. And people grab the feed, and so I made two yeah. or three. I went back and grabbed some stuff and just kind of fed them in there. Didn't see the scheduler that was in there, and, I, and so Emily was very kind. 
hey Jim, just a little suggestion. Yeah. You might want to spread it out a little bit. And yeah. uh, and I, I appreciated the kindness on her part yeah. to just kind of say. And so that's kind of I've been trying to separate them by 24 hour periods. Yep. Just kind of get them so I get one throughout the week. And I've actually seen some really good result, results. I mean, I think I've probably gotten. I don't know, five to ten times more likes and follows in this time period. I've been doing it for the last two weeks where I'm getting more content on a daily basis, and it's different content so that sure. it's spread out by enough time. And and yet, so it seems like that's a fairly good rhythm. Do you have any from, uh, well, so we'll talk podcaster success stories. Yeah. Do you have any other stories like that for us podcasters where you'd say, man, these kinds of things are really working well? Um. I think the other thing is the type of thing you put up, and I think you, you've you got this. Um, we, we see kind of like an evolution um, when people first come on. The first thing somebody does is their first instinct, a lot of people, is just to post clamors that are like, hey, here I am. Listen to me. I'm here. I'm, I'm X. Listen to me, um, which is fine, but um, that's not giving the listener a reason to listen. Um, you know, sometimes people may be doing a funny voice or something, so it's a little better, but it's not, you want to show rather than tell in a sense. So one practice that we've seen is delivering an independent piece of value in the clamor itself, not simply a promotion of like an advertorial, like listen to me, because it's not, they don't know why they should, but like a highlight or a standalone observation or whatever. Um, I think that's the other practice that, and I know you've nailed that, but um, just for somebody who's new to playing around with clamor, um, that we see this kind of natural evolution in their in their clamors, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, and when I'm listening, the thing I like about mm -hmm. it is that just what you said. So when I'm going through and listening to those channels, yeah. the ones where I'm clicking on the longer media is the one where they've delivered something really good I right. like I like the way they sound. I like what they're doing. Like you know, the whole show might even be better, or the whole broadcast, whatever it was. Yeah. But, the, but there are still the people out there that are going. You know, okay, I'm this. I talk about this in my show, or I'm going to talk about this, and then it's done. Like, well, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if it's going to be good or not. But the people that deliver yeah. that one really good tip, yeah. those are the people that I'm clicking on follow and clicking on the extended media. That's right. And again, the one at least what you cited, somebody who says this is what's coming up on my show, that's actually like okay. That, that's like an okay yeah. thing to do. Um, there's an even earlier version that if the evolution's like somebody who just says, I'm X, listen to me, and you, you'd be surprised. That's a natural thing a lot of early users do. Then it's, um, here's a preview of just like a summary of what, what's going to happen on my show, and that can be effective, but I think it's often more effective to your point, Mike, um, to just dive in and say, here's something great. Um, and then somebody would be like, you know what, that's cool. Uh, I want to hear that. Um, so that, that's kind of another practice that we've seen. Um, you hit the nail on the head there. And I think the, the content uh, producers who actually listen to more clamors, I think they're the ones who are getting it. You can yeah. tell the, the producers that actually listen, use clamor, listen, because they know in themselves, okay, what do I like? What do I listen to? What intrigues me? So I right. found that you know, my first clamor was was exactly what I said not to do. You know, it was kind of like the whole, uh, you know, here's the intro to my podcast, kind of yeah. come listen. And then I started to use clamor in my everyday life, and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I, now I have a whole different idea of how I want to clamor myself. So right. I think it kind of evolves as you use the app more and more, which is great. It's a fantastic platform to kind of build your knowledge base on as you use it more. Yep. I, um, I started, I started the very first one I did was just the opening of the show. I just grabbed the first 18 seconds, you know, this okay. is the Average Guy Network and you found, and I, and I, you know, it was interesting. I, I got some, you know, I got a few hits on that and people liked it and I thought, really, you, you like the intro to the show? And yeah. so as I started listening to other clamors, I started going, oh, okay. And so I'm actually trying to leave a question at the end of the clamor so that it's, it, it leaves cool. it hanging a little bit. So we don't quite finish the thought or we write to kind of entice them to come back in. And like I said, um, this, the last two weeks have been two really good weeks. I think I've tripled my followers. I think I'm almost close to a hundred. So I think that's cool. the goal 
I've been shooting for on that. Not that I count or anything like that, but um, you know, it's just been it's been a lot of fun in the experimental process. I cut you off there, uh, Pervy. What were you going to say? Oh no 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 no. I, I was going I was thinking about another. I was just gonna keep going with your question yeah. of like tips. Yeah. Um, go ahead. You know, so that was kind of tip area number two, right? One was like spreading the content. Two was um uh you know the type of clamors, and that's a really interesting uh, point, Jim. We've seen folks do that. Um, Barry Funkhauser, awesome name. Um, he. Uh, he he's he's done something along those lines, and he was sometimes just literally cutting it off um, at the end. I don't think that worked out as well as he wanted. He thought people would get intrigued, but I think sometimes some people did, some people didn't. But he's done a lot of that kind of experimentation too. Um, how do you get? That's in a sense gold standard. Um, deliver value, in, get emotional intrigue. Um, we're excited to see how people play with it, you know, um, and and what. What generates more of the kind of hear more activity? I think a third one is um, uh, using Clamor as a social media outlet, um, truly a social media outlet. And um, there are a couple aspects to that. Um, one is just in the posting process. I know for people who use a publisher portal, they can't do it directly. But um, uh, when you post a Clamor with the app, you automatically send it to Facebook and Twitter at the same time. Um, and then if you're if you use the publisher portal, you can just go into the app and share it to Facebook and Twitter. So that's just a nice way to just without additional work, like great, I have more stuff to say on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and then I think this one's a little tougher because it's more about super power users, but thinking about ways to encourage the audience to do that hard work for you. So you know the thing for podcasters that's so tricky is they're they're doing all the hard work of making the podcast and they're promoting themselves. Um, and one of our hypotheses question, questions coming in was, can you turn your audience into a megaphone for your podcast? Like, can you have your audience access their social graph on your behalf um, by just simply encouraging them, hey guys, clamor me if you liked something here. Um, or and we were seeing early days of it, but things like call and response, um, these guys from a great podcast, Jock and Nerd, which is a podcast about comic books. They're super fun. They're a brand new podcast. They told their listeners to just take their podcast and just do something interesting with it. So they had one listener who took um, little, a couple little tr pieces of their podcast, and then you know, on Clamor you can multi-track. So they took those pieces and kept repeating them, in a bit of a loop and added a rap beat to it and they turned it into a rap. And like nothing to do with the podcast. You know, it was like it was like they just took their words and turned them into a rap. And um, but that's the kind of thing that gets attention and it's got to hear more link. It's a form of social validation of these people are interesting enough for me to spend my time doing something creative with them, um, with what they're putting out. And so that's kind of the the third bucket of advice is think about it as a as a way to take this audio format and make it uh, social. We look at every flavor of media and there's a bite-sized social flavor of it. Text has Twitter, images have Instagram, video has Vine. Um, there's no good reason why audio, given how much great content, what great personalities there are and how personal the interaction is, um, can't have that kind of flavor happening too. That's not going to be everyone uh, creating it. It's going to be like a small subset, but that's always the case with most uh, user-generated stuff. It's actually a very small share who are making, making the most interesting stuff. Yeah, uh, Jason Bryant in the in the chat. He's a, another podcaster uh, yeah. and, and hangs and hangs in our circles. He said, "Early adopter of Clamor here. Love using it. Saw a new idea today where someone can directly thank sponsors or donors in a Clamor." So, uh, oh, you know, a way of doing that out through the clamor. Uh, you yeah. gave me, I, I, I have not tweeted or, or put on Facebook a direct clamor. So that's something I'll need to give a, a try to. I'll be honest, I've been so focused on creating the, my own 18 second, you know, sound bites for that. Yeah. I have not spent a lot of time in the user portal of, of making, you know, making clamors for other people. That's just sure. something I haven't done yet. So. Maybe a tip. Maybe some of our listeners can go out there and give that a try. I'm, I need to dig into it a little bit more, uh, you know, to kind of get that figured out as well. But uh, interesting. What would you, from a listening standpoint, certainly you gave some advice about 
and I've done this before. I and I love the comedy channel, although I've been very careful not safe for work on the comedy <laughs> channel. <laughs> you have to, you know, one has to be very careful there. But but there are a couple uh, characters in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there is, and you get some interesting. I mean, I found some really good comedy in there. I mean, it, and. Uh, you listen to the little bit, and then you go to the long play, and there's some Comedy Central stuff, and I mean, there's some really good comedy in there. Mm-hmm. There's some real garbage, uh, yeah. You know, but you get good with bad, and that's yeah. why you swipe it in 18 seconds, or you don't have to wait the full 18 seconds. You can just swipe that thing and and let it keep going. But right. from a listening standpoint, any tips for folks who, hey, I'm not a content creator, but I love to find new media and new content. What kind of tips would you give the average listener? Yeah, um, a few things come to mind there. Um, one, one thing, first of all, as a listener, this kind of bridges the, just the pre, prior conversation is, um, there are a couple ways as a listener that you don't have to be a Jim Collison, um, to, to kind of do interesting things with audio or just throw, put yourself into audio. Um, and, and which are the following one is there's a remix feature in clamor. So when you're listening to a clamor next to the thumbs up button, there's an arrow and you hit remix. And then you can make a clamor out of any clamor. So uh, if Jim put up a clamor, you can remix that and take that clamor and then do a little voice intro to it. Add, add your own Mystery Science 3000 type commentary, uh, right? And Jim's putting that screen up. When you hit remix, it just pulls that track onto a soundboard. Um, and then you can scrub that thing, go to the right spot. You can shrink it. Uh, and then you can multi-track on top of it, so you can add your voice. Um, you know, one fun thing I do is I do your NPR raps. Um, you know, I take NPR stories and I put a rap beat under them because I, for no good reason, because I can't. Um, and so that's that's just kind of like a fun, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, why wouldn't you? Right? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Right? It's, uh, it's great. Um, so you can, um, as a user, you can play around in in fun ways. Another thing that we just added in the most recent release is. On that screen that Jim pulled up, there were a bunch of circles that were like New York subway icons at the bottom. And um, those are sources you can pull in from. So you can pull anything from SoundCloud. You can pull in any music on your phone, any podcast that's downloaded on your phone. Um, there's There's something there called sounds. And sounds is us pulling in. It's on the far right. Uh, people were putting up just a bunch of clips of often funny things like movie quotes funny internet memes like Antoine Dodson, hide your kids, hide your wife, things like that, um, rap beats. And so we pulled those into sounds. And um, instead of somebody having stumbling upon them, they can just go in there and just listen to those. And if you like something, you just grab that sound and you can stick an image on it. Take a selfie of your reaction to something and throw one of these funny rap hooks in there. And so as somebody, again, who's not... Uh, you know, like a gym or a mic. Here, let's see. Can you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just the electronic beat in there. Yeah. Yeah. And those are, and we also we put ourselves some beats in there that were just rap beats and electronic beats. Um, but then there are a bunch of other things from uh, movies, etc. So one aspect of the listener experience is you can actually have a lot of fun. Um, the to get to just more straight listening. Um, we're, we're channel based, uh, so you just subscribe to channels and you can always add more, scroll to the bottom and um, you know, listen to them and then think about customizing them uh, as you listen. So when you're listening, you can hit that arrow button that's next to thumbs up and mute any source that you don't love or press the tile, like press it for two seconds for your channel when you're on your homepage and that'll let you bulk mute different um, sources. So one tip is to customize. Another is to um, create channels that combine different accounts because you may want to hear your tech news and your sports stuff together. Um, and that, that's just another easy move for listeners. Um, uh, and, and then last thing is, this was a bit of an Easter egg that we put into Clamor, and we wanted to just see how people were playing around with it. But Clamor has private messaging um, in it, and it's actually a super cool way to build community. If you're hearing somebody who's putting stuff up, clamp, like send them a private message. Um, and, and, or if you hear something that Jim might like, send them a private message in Clamor. Um, we just as an experiment went and randomly private messaged people. Um, just, just to sort of send them a note just saying, hey, like, like what you put up. 
um, or hey, uh, you might want to listen to this. And what was interesting is we then saw, you know, on the back end, people who got a message started messaging other people. They got kind of, oh, this is a behavior I can engage in. Um, and they became actually super hooked on Clamor. Um, and, and the private messaging, you can do it in a couple ways. If a Clamor is playing, you hit that arrow button next to thumbs up. A lot of things can be accessed through that arrow button. And then among the share options, you instead of Facebook or Twitter, you share it to Clamor. And, um, and then that'll give you a screen where you can type in a message and a name. Um, and, uh, and then you can just uh, share that out to people. Um, you know, Jim, I, um, I'm going to send you a message. You can even maybe pop that up. Uh, I'm going to do, who knows, I'll just do a random news thing for now real quick. Uh, all right. Um, I'll be honest while you're doing that. Yeah. Way more, I have not dug into the user features on this. And now all of a sudden I'm like, because I've heard Dave, Dave Jackson came at this from the user angle. Yeah. And I kind of came at it from the content angle. And he kept talking about, yeah, I've been spending time doing these mixes and stuff. And I'm like, mixes? What's he uh -huh. talking about? Yeah. I mean, don't just load your 18 seconds and be done with it, man. And so, Mike, let me ask you as you look at this, have you dug into the kind right of the now? mix side of it? <laughs> well, yeah, the mix side, no, that all these user capabilities I'm starting to find. And uh, I had found a few of them before we had talked, but now I'm sure. just even more intrigued with that whole customization. Um, honestly, I was using just the main channels on the main sure. board, and those were good enough for me. But now knowing I can customize down, because there were a few things that if I, now that I know I can do it, I would have kind of said, eh, you know, I'm not too interested in that, or I want to mix in a little bit of other content. So this is, yeah, no, I've not played with it yet, but going to right now. So yeah. Parviz, I just got your message yep. up there, so I can click on that, and then you shared I some, shared something some, from Reddit, yeah. yeah. And then I could, uh, in in this point, I can click on that. And it's it's taking me right to the clamor that you referenced. Right, and then right. you and I can have a chat string. We you just text based, um, or you can throw another clamor back at me. Um, and then you can now initiate these texts from the message center without necessarily sharing something. Oh, I had um, no idea it had this messaging in it. It was a little full Easter egg. Uh, yeah, we you know we we just wanted to put it there and see kind of organically what happened. And a lot of, a lot of our approach is um, focusing on the community and then having folks in the community start to share things. You can only educate so much in on the mobile experience, I think, without somebody just tuning you out a little bit. Um, we did put up um, on YouTube at tiny.cc slash clamor videos a 45-minute workshop. Um, on getting everything you want out of Clamor. It's oriented toward podcasters who are creators, um, but that thing also has hyperlinked uh, timestamps to every topic covered, so you can treat it as a um, kind of table of contents. And it's a screen share, and we just go through every single aspect of using Clamor with all these kind of power user, or just really cool features that are hard to surface uh, in one go to people. Um, but that's another fun way this kind of remixing stuff, throwing stuff around to each other, um, you know, aspect of Clamor. Okay, we'll have to go into a little bit of a lightning round. We've got about 15 minutes on this. We try and keep the guests to about an hour. And by the way, thank you for coming on here. If I don't say that, you have been awesome sharing this with us. We cool. just get the best interviews when we do this. But 18 seconds, right? That The, the chat room is saying, why 18 seconds? Why? And I've heard you explain this before, but yes. talk a little bit about why, how you guys landed on 18 seconds. Sure. Guiding principle is or was that we wanted to be able to convey uh, a meaningful amount of information or entertainment. At the same time, we wanted it to be short enough that invariably when you get something you don't like, um, you're not going to be feeling like you're stuck with it. And if something's really bad, 18 in a sense is still too long. Um, but at least it's gone, right? Um, so we were trying to balance, convey something useful, but um, enough that it's gone. Um, and so we started off with a couple anchor points. Psychological research uh, on the human working memory, i.e. short-term memory, says that it's seven to nine seconds. If you translate 140 characters of Twitter into the spoken word, it's 10 seconds. Um, so we started off in that zip code at 12 seconds. 
um, what we found was people were talking super fast um, or trying to talk super fast to put stuff in. They were just stuffing a little too more too much in. And also, people were feeling a little bit taxed. Um, and so they're saying these things are coming sequentially. It's not as if it's one thing I have to get in my short-term memory. They're coming sequentially, and it's I can't let it kind of sink in. Um, so we then went and did something where we uh, read a bunch of New York Times articles out loud, um, recorded it, and marked at what point we understood what the point was, not just the topic, but the point, and consistently uh, the, pretty much all of them came in. At, the benchmark was uh, right around 18 seconds. And so we said, you know, New York Times, reasonably well thought through, reasonably well written, uh, trying to communicate something um, that works. Um, and then for more entertainment, we embedded in the Berkeley College of Music in Boston during our product development. And um, we got a lot of good feedback from musicians around, look, um, if I want to get a hook and really a musical phrase, not just a hook, um, 18 is a little better than 12. Um, and so that's that's how we landed at the 18. Good answer. And uh, yeah. what about legal concerns about copyrighted? You know, there's there's all kinds of stuff when we think about music sure. and YouTube. I mean, YouTube will will pull you down in a second. Have you guys yeah. uh, what, what have you thought through on the legal side? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, so, you know, copyright law is one of these things that there are not bright line rules around. Um, there are there are standards around things like, you know, are you transforming it? Um, are you is it is it fair use uh, in, in various ways? So um, we did a few things. This isn't this wasn't the motivation for the short form, but one aspect of it is if you're sharing a piece of something, um, it, it's it's something that's sort of a highlight. Uh, as opposed to really taking the whole thing, um, so you're in a way, and, and you're promoting it. So we we built into the platform attribution. Uh, you know, when you remix something or when you pull in a podcast, all the metadata comes in with it, and a hear more link gets generated with it too to link somebody to that content. And we don't host that or anything like that. Um, so there are aspects of the platform that we think are additive to anyone who owns content. To make them actually actively seek to have people clamor it, um, because it it actually gets the word out about them. Um, that's one aspect. The other is um, we have policies, including and then and a mechanism, which is the um, just the feedback mechanism, uh, to if if there is a violation going on um, for some for people to report that, and then a takedown policy internally where we take stuff down. Um, so it's similar to a lot of these places like a YouTube where, um, now YouTube's obviously got a ton of resources, they do advanced fingerprinting, um, but uh, you know you can't police, police people ex ante, um, but you can have very clear policies where if there's violation and that's going on, um, you can take those things down uh, and be really respectful of um, of, of copyright holders' rights, um, and, and that's so we, we we sort of set we set those in, those policies in place from from the get go. And then other Jim asks, so you need iOS seven to load Clamor. That leaves out the iPhone three GS. I, I told you guys, my guys are super techie, right? Yeah. I told you that. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the original iPad, the iPod Touch four, and of course, no fault of yours, is what he's saying. Sure. What um, what issues have you faced in the developer with the App Store, and how has been developing with you know for the iPhone for you guys? Um, uh, we it's been it's been a a great experience. Apple Apple's been actually um, uh, helpful and responsive. Uh, you know, at some important moments uh, with the review process, um, you know, get, being giving us clear feedback, having a good platform for documenting that feedback um, along the way. Um, you know, when we had a couple of things that were truly surprises and we said, gee, this kind of compromises the user experience, um, they have a process for escalating reviews to get a review in more quickly than their normal timeline. Um, so, you know, we've, we've actually really appreciated um, uh, kind, of, kind of the, the app developer ecosystem and set of uh, kind of capabilities Apple set up. Obviously, a lot of folks will um, not love that you can't immediately immediately release on Apple. Um, you know, you have the review process. It can take like kind of two weeks, and you know, candidly, that does slow us down in a sense of 
um, it makes it harder for us to iterate uh, if we have some things we want to test. It's more high stakes. Like, oh, you're going to test this, but um, it's going to take basically four weeks uh, because you're going to submit. Um, it's going to be uh, reviewed within the kind of two weeks. And, you know, nowadays it's a nine, ten day review cycle, but it can be longer. And then once you make your judgment on that test th and you want to say fix it to go back to the original, it's another two weeks, right? So that's and uh, you know, a lot of when you're early stage is the ability to iterate, and that that somewhat slows things down. Um, if if I just wanted to look at it at a very um, without peeling the onion. On the other hand, um, it's a good forcing mechanism for us to um, exercise a judgment layer um, and say, let's be thoughtful about this uh, before just throwing something out for people to check out. Um, and let's be smart about other ways to test this insight uh, instead of just throwing something out. So in a way, maybe it's actually helpful for getting things that are a little more polished and thought through. Um, so I've come to my gut, my initial reaction was, and then my kind of on on further reflection, I've said, you know what? It's maybe not the natural way I would have loved to work, but um, there's there's some thought behind this as well, and I can appreciate that. Um, if we um, if we have listeners, we'll have a few who yeah. who pick this up and start using it, and they want to give you guys feedback. What's the best way for you guys to hear that feedback at this point? Yeah. So um, if you go to the um, menu, hamburger, and then set up upper, upper left, and then settings, there's a feedback button. And that feedback, there are different ways to provide the feedback, um, goes to an email address. It's support at clamor.com. That is not somebody who's um, uh, a uninvolved passive person. Uh, you know, that is me personally. <laughs> that is Oren. That is David. That is Kent. We see that. Uh, we, we were actually really jump on it. Um, and so that's, even though it says something like support at clamor.com, we are an early stage company. We're all in, um, <laughs> we personally read it. So that's the best way to really get that kind of feedback to us. Um, we're, we're active on Twitter. Um, and so DMing us on Twitter is great too. Um, and I'll, I'll read that and I'll respond directly. Um, uh, but, um, you know, email, you can put a little more in there, a little more detail, et cetera. All right, and then what about monetization? I mean, certainly you're not doing this out of the goodness of your heart. Yeah. Right? I mean, you kind of are. There's always passion yeah. in these kinds of projects. For right? sure. I totally get that. But uh, tell us what you can. I know you're probably going to hold some of this close, but uh, what can you tell us? No, there's nothing. You know, um, people can take me at face value on this or not, but um, the, 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 the answer to the question is um, we have no clue um, on monetization, candidly. Uh, uh, we don't have some plot. The thing is, I guess philosophically, the way we think about monetization is it's another aspect. It's another product feature. Um, it's not separate from the product. It's a product feature. And so just like you don't want to over feature your product with every single thing, uh, you want to be thoughtful about the features that, you're, that are most important to get out and test. Um, from our perspective, what we care about is we want to create a community around Clamor and something useful for that community. Um, once we nail that um, in, in a kind of scale fashion, um, it'll become apparent to us what kind of monetization is right-sized for that community. I, I think there's not really a dearth of ideas on the monetization front. There are kind of four, five, six standard moves on monetization, uh, and you can get creative about flavors of those moves. Um, and so what's not clear, though, is what's the right fit for that, right? So the thing that comes to a lot of people's minds in, in, in digital media is advertising. Fine, that's one. Um, I'm not sure, I, I sometimes find the way advertising is implemented um, in audio disrespectful to the audience. Um, so there's some, there's some kind of real puts and takes to that. The other is um, people who are putting things up, content owners, uh, rightly should participate in that. So there's some operational aspect to, um, wait, so you're having people put things up and then you're going to advertise on top of that? Like, no, you, you have, kind of have to think about the ecosystem. Like Spotify, you mean? Is that <laughs> so, so I'm not going to name names or anything. I, but, I so, just did. <laughs> but, but those are those are some of the complications around advertising. How do you, how would you do it respectfully to the audience um, and then in a way that's um, kind of additive uh, to the ecosystem? 
Um, so there are other moves, right? There's that hear more button. Um, that hear more button uh, goes to more content, but it could be paid content. Um, it can be premium, it can be audiobooks, it can be music. So um, one move is if we're facilitating that transaction, making it easier, um, commission off that. Um, obviously apps have premium features. They have in-app purchases. Maybe it's uh, you know a set of clamor sounds that are I love you sounds or poking you type sounds that you buy for some of the private messaging, things like that. So th there are a lot of ideas and I could go on. Um, there's no secret about them in the sense that we're not keeping that stuff particularly close. Um, we just we just have no clue. Um, uh, and we, we think you know, if you start getting in the monetization game before you get into the um, what's the product game, uh, you can compromise the product, um, and we, we really want to create something awesome first. Um, yeah, no, it's good. There's a million questions here. I, I, I could go on for another yeah. hour, but uh, Mike, uh, I want to see if you have any final questions as we, as we kind of bring this in for landing. The 18-second one was my main question. I was interested to hear about why 18 seconds. There seems to be a big trend behind that. There's a new... Um, relatively new company called 15 Second Tech. And so they're on Instagram and they post 15 seconds and they get all your information in there. And yeah. I was thinking, man, is that not a perfect clamor bite-sized thing? When I saw them, I'm like, that's that's a clamor right there. And it, and it, it was natural. You're totally right. With the 15 seconds, um, it, they do seem a little bit quick, so 18 even that much better. Mm -hmm. And when I was going into editing, I thought it was I thought it was great. So yeah, that was kind of my main main question. Yeah. So and I think one thing I'll just flag there is um, on the 18, one reason we got comfortable putting a constraint in is because you can associate it with longer content. Um, you can first of all pull in anything that's on Dropbox, Google Drive, even in your email. If you have an email audio attachment, you just long press it and you pull that into the mix board. Um, and then that hear more link can tie to something you just have in Dropbox. So you don't have to be a publisher. Um, you can have an open MP3 thing to something that you just personally put up there. Um, and so we thought, give people a taste and let them choose if they want more. Um, and, and that's a pretty good, happy medium there. So one one more just final kind of question about kind of just how the whole process works of, you know, you have your four friends and you have, they sound like they're very different. You have the front end guy, the back end guy. You've got, you know, you and your buddy who are law school graduates. Yeah. How is the whole... I know, just the feeling of working in a four-man startup, kind of developing something, and then all of a sudden seeing it take off like this, kind of seeing your baby grow. Yeah. I mean, how was that from beginning to, to now, just the dynamic of you and these four guys doing something that you want to do? Um, I mean, it's uh, – I'm, I'm living like a I, – I, I'm, I'm truly blessed in the sense of uh, getting to create something and see – we get so happy seeing people use Clamor – and interacting like this conversation, you know, I've been kind of smiling the whole time. It's great that you guys have played with Clamor, like we're and we're really appreciative of it. I mean, people can spend their time doing all kinds of things, um, and so we appreciate people giving it a shot. And we think it's um, something that works for us. Uh, the team dynamics really fun and, and great in the sense of um, we're we're all uh, a bit on the kind of we're, we're all experienced, um, and we all have like really clear things that we're focused on um, and everyone's kind of pretty driving pretty hard in, in their swim lanes essentially um, uh, and that's been great and we were lucky that we um, we had some a little bit of seed funding um, from uh, really individual investors uh, who just kind of more than anything else just said this is like a smart idea like uh, this kind of just makes sense like I, I don't know what this is going to be but um, I just like you either get it or you don't in the sense of some people are just like oh like yeah um, I, why 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 doesn't this exist if it may not be for every single person but like a Twitter has less than 25 percent penetration of the population but is a very valuable um, service to people um, and also I guess the markets or whatever um, you know, it goes up and down but it's still like a valuable company in, that, in the money respect um, and so they were we got lucky in the sense that these folks were just um, really patient investors who just said, um, here's, here's a little bit, you know, it's not like they were throwing gobs of money at us. They just said, I get this, um, he, you know, here's my seed investment and um, let me know how I can help. Um, and so there wasn't sometimes some of that, you know, when I talked about the monetization model, there's not somebody um, breathing down our necks to say, 
uh, when's this thing going to make money? It's more um, how are you toward making something awesome? Um, and uh, you know that, that was again another real um, blessing to to be able to have some of those folks in our corner um, who had that mindset. That's fun yeah. to see. I always love yeah. hearing those kind of stories of how the dynamics work in those startups and it's just a fun industry to see all the different ways people go about things and the different dynamics there are. So it's always fun. There's a lot of sausage making. It's not, I have to say for anyone who thinks that, um, uh, you're going to like get rich or you're going to play a lot of ping pong. Um, it's, it has to really come from a place of a little bit of a weird, irrational obsession um, and if you're making if you're making a probability weighted bet on getting rich I think um, managing other people's money is generally the move it's like the Honda Civic move of uh, how to how to do well in life if everyone was rational they drive a Honda Civic uh, I think probably managing people's money would be the move um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I would not say uh, do a startup like <laughs> you know I put my own money in they put his own money in before we asked for a nickel of anybody else's money um, it, it's more of a we think like it's like a little itch, you know. You once you get the thought in your brain of the world needs this, um, you kind of can't go to sleep without giving it to the world. Like you're like, well, I like it needs to happen, right? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's the same. Different. It's the same drive all us podcasters have. By the way, we exactly. live and we breathe. I mean, just think about that. We love to be on the mic. We love to do these interviews. We're this is as cool for us as it is for you to be able to talk about this stuff because we're. Right able to take your message and broadcast it to our listeners, and that's really cool, right? And so right. I think we understand, I, I think if anybody, podcasters understand that passion of like, I think I come home the other, you know, the other day, I had family in town, we had graduations going on, and I, I, I didn't sit at my desk for like three days. <laughs> and I, I told somebody, I'm like, I, I'm going through like work withdrawals. I need to, I mean, I got some... I got some audio to edit, or I've got some, you know, stuff to socialize. And right. So it got got pretty difficult. So I totally understand. Real quick question before we let yeah. you go: Why Clamor? How did that? How'd you get that name? So um, a little addendum to the law school story is, um, you know, at our law school, you're put into small groups of twelve or so. You took all your classes together, um, every single class. And so our small group, Dave and I met on the first day of law school. So we were in the same small group. His future wife was also in that in that small group, so he got his long term business partner and his wife. Good deal. I got a I got a pretty good deal. I got a pretty David, good law school. Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and so uh, it's like the love boat law school. So um, the um, uh, uh, so she is brilliant, much smarter than us. And um, she popped her head out of the shower one day and said to Dave, "Clamor." And he called and picked up the phone and was like, "Clamor." And um, you know, it's the idea of clamoring masses. Uh, it's not clam diggers, people with their uh, ankle sle uh, short uh, pants rolled up. It's it's the idea of clamoring masses, yeah. uh, clamoring for stuff. And um, we dropped the vowel at the end uh, not to look particularly startup-y, but because you know somebody parked that domain and we weren't going to pay them for it. So no, I, I um, think it's cool. I'm glad you did. That's the trend. Yeah. Uh, I had a, We had a high school student create an organizer, and he just left the E off and spelled it that <laughs> way, and that was a zap. <laughs> And yep. uh, and that's that's very very cool. No, that that was a question from chat. So, Parvis, thank you for taking yeah. an hour. I told you 45 minutes. You've been very generous with your time. If I invited you to come back for like, would you come back for like major release announcements and some of those kinds of things? Enthusiastically, yeah, it's okay. super fun to hang out with you guys. So yeah, you bet. Let me know as we go. I won't always. I'll I'll try to prompt you. But if you've got some stuff you guys want to share with the community, whatever. The guys will try these things out. We love small startups. That's kind of an area in podcasting that I've kind of gone niche for all the other tech podcasters are going after the you know the crazy stuff all the yeah. big stuff I like to get down you know we've had the guys at BitLit and they I just saw they renamed their their app to Shelfie which I thought mm. was really cool you know you take a picture of a shelf and they it, it OCRs the books and then they go and find if you have they have digital copies available for free or reduced price which is a really cool app idea they cool. pivoted on their name they were BitLit but when they were calling these pictures Shelfies. Oh, that's a great. That's an awesome name. Yeah, and it for, caught for what on. You just described. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It makes way more sense. Like Bitlet, I don't know, but Shelfie. Okay, once I've heard it a little bit, oh yeah, that makes sense. And so we had them on, and we just we love the startup and uh, love to hear the story. We will certainly, from a podcaster's side, I'm going to dig in and uh, spend quite a bit of time. Now that I've seen the portal, uh, I think Mike over there has been making. 
<laughs> it clamors the whole time. <laughs> Clamoring, yeah. I should have um, been. See, as your co-host, I should just be making these clamors as we go. Oh uh, well, I'm. I want to do. So I'm looking forward to doing some mashup. I have not done that yet. Where maybe we do some mashup clamors and yeah. uh, and just have fun with it. So exactly. Um, just be goofy. Um, yeah. No, for sure. Parvis, thank you for taking the time. Mike cool. and I have a little community stuff to do, so we'll let you get back to your life. Thanks again. We'll be in contact and appreciate the time. All right, everyone, clamor on. All right. right. Thank Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Yeah, take care. Same to you. You bet. All right. We will uh, let him drop. Mike, thanks for uh, sitting through that. Again, I'm I'm still figuring out how to let you in on questions. I hope I didn't hog the the mic. No, I love it. I love just hopping in there, and I have no trouble just jumping in when I have a question. Okay, good. Good. I'm going to yeah. stop feeling bad about that. We're Yeah, no, stop feeling bad about it. La- I'm still kind of learning the pace with you, so it's one of those kinds of things where... I was going to let him keep... I mean, that was just fantastic information. Yeah, it was really so, good. Yeah. It was really good. At, at one point, I'm like, you know, it's a podcast. We can go as long as we want, but it was one of those things I wanted to respect his time. And right. I'd like to leave a little bit of, of uh, you know, a little intrigue. So let's, let's just say... Uh, yeah, other Jim says we need a John Zadler clamor channel. That would be awesome because Zadler's got the best clamors of all time. And you know, I'd be surprised if that doesn't catch on that word clamor as a short kind of a clip. Did you clamor it kind of thing? Um, yeah. They might they might be the first. Certainly not exactly the first in this idea, but I think have gotten some really good traction at least in our community in our podcasting community. Um, so I'm excited about where they're headed. I'm gonna try some new stuff. We are on, if you're the listener, I have a lot of stuff on Clamor. So if you have an iPhone, uh, check us out. Head to, head out you know, to the App Store and just search Clamor, C-L-A-M-M-R, and that will come up. Sign in, set an account. You can find us there. I would be interested if you came up with some interesting mashups of, uh, of Home Gadget Geeks, right? I mean, I think there's some opportunities to Clamor what I'm doing and make fun of it. That would be fine or have fun with it. Well, that's even better. Um, got some great opportunities. So uh, Jason says, great show, guys. Jason, thanks for coming out. We're going to do a little bit of tech stuff here at the end, but you're welcome to stay around for that as well, Jason, a fellow podcaster out there in the community. Um, Mike, we got a new live page, which I'm super excited about this week. We finally uh, figured out the only way we were going to get it done is just to create a new site. So Christian provisioned off live.theaverageguy.tv. You don't have to use it, though. I've set everything in place. Continue to go to theaverageguy.tv slash live or the average guy. Well, just come to theaverageguy.tv slash live and then navigate from there. That's the easiest way to do it. We have live one and two. They are not on secure sites. They don't really need to be. That's not. There's nothing here that benefits us from these being HTTPS and having certificates. Um, saves me money on Chatwing, so I don't have to pay 20 bucks for that or 11. I guess it's 11.20 now. Whatever that. Whatever they're doing that for. Uh, but we actually set up a brand new WordPress site, skinned it exactly like the average guy.tv site, and uh, and got all the links going back and forth. Christian and I worked on that this weekend. It's, I love working with that guy, man. He is just, I get him on Skype and he spent an hour with me and we just got everything skinned back and forth and had a good time. So that, um, that should be up and working. And, um, we will. Uh, we're hoping at this point. It just. Uh, it seems like tonight everybody made it to the chat room. Although you guys weren't having a problem with the chat room before. No. Uh, but if if you're not, if you haven't joined us live, if you're listening to the recorded version of this, come out Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out at the Average Guy. TV slash live and uh, check it out. Again, under the under the covers, nothing changes. The Average Guy. TV slash live. All that stuff works. It redirects to the right pages, and you never have to really remember anything again. But you're one of those kind of techie guys that wants to know. It's really a separate subdomain of live.theaverageguy.tv. Mike, it works we got out pretty well. Yeah, I, it's I, it's working okay. If you guys find something wrong with it, let me know. I, yeah. I I haven't found any broken links or anything that's not working. And Christian and I tested it out, but there's nothing like having live testers out there to see how that works. So jump out there and uh, and get that tested for me. Mike, we are featured Home Gadget Geeks. I got an email this morning. They wanted they featured us on Spreaker. So if you go to Spreaker.com right now uh, or anytime in this week uh, and you go to their front page, you will see the big – and I forget Look the at name. that right Boom, there. Right Featured there. this week. Yeah, pretty nice. I got that. Very I got nice. That, that, I got a note from them via email. Hey, we'd love to feature you. It's a podcaster. So the, the, uh, the, the uh, teal – Home Gadget Geeks uh, logo is out there, and uh, they are featuring us uh, bold and strong. So, 
Support those guys over at Spreaker. Head over. If you haven't tried Spreaker yet, you can head over to Spreaker.com. You'll see us at least this week. If you're listening to this after May 28th, a week after, it'll be it'll have been gone. Although it drops down to the bottom, and then it, you get four more weeks of or three more weeks of coverage down on the bottom. There's little boxes. You just you just kind of fade off until you go away. We we were featured at Gallup. I didn't see that much of a traffic difference, to be honest. Uh, but uh, no, pretty cool. That's what I was going to ask. I'll be interested to see if it does do anything different. You know, because Gallup is a completely different style of podcast. So maybe if it's something a little more average person with this podcast, maybe it will pick up a little bit more on Spreaker. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Spreaker's been a, just a, a dynamite platform to be on for, as a podcaster. We, actually, they're our media provider for Gallup, and uh, we're doing it for free. I, at some point, I'm going to have to start paying for that, but we've got a great deal going on at, uh, at Spreaker with that. Works well, and uh, I just I just spent some time today. You know, every day I learn something new with it, and just today I was talking to the team, and I'm like, oh, we're going to have to go back and change some things. We didn't do it this this we didn't do this right. We didn't optimize that in the right way. So we've got some week. I've, we were on a temporary hiatus with uh, one of the podcasts until we kind of figure out what we're going to do. And so I thought, well, I got about six or seven or eight weeks. I could uh, I could fix my feed problems and uh, get some things corrected in that time. So we we kicked that off today, and we'll be making some progress over there. If you're ever interested in the Gallup stuff, coaching.gallup.com. That's my other life. That's where I get to podcast at work, and uh, stuff is very, very cool. So give it a listen. Uh, we'll remind you as well, Home Service Show Meetup is coming up September 12th. That will be here like that before you know it. Mike's going out with me, and hopefully, is it still looking good for you to, to go to it's the looking meetup? looking good. I'm, on, I'm out of the country the weekend before, and then I'm going to be with you that next weekend. So Holy crap. Where are you going? Be, uh, going to Cancun. Oh, nice. Yeah, going that's with not brother really and sister-in-law. Cancun. That's just like an extension of America. Well, yeah, that's true. But it's still longer flight, yeah. but it'll be good because it's that uh, Labor Day weekend, so get an extra day. Don't have to take off any time from school or anything like that. So, Yeah, good. Well, September 12th, uh, you will leave on the 11th. We'll get back on the 14th, something like that, and uh, hang out at um, in, the, uh, in Fishers, Indiana, really part of Indianapolis. I'll have a link in the show notes to the meetup sign up. Just to, click that link and head over there. Uh, $25 this year to get in, and that covers all your food or a good chunk of the food while you're there. Dave does a nice job of taking care of you. And uh, we want to say get those rooms. They're going pretty fast. So if you want to get in there, that link is in the official link. That will be in, in the uh, the blog post here. So go out to theaverageguide.tv slash HGG for Home Gadget Geeks 216. That will get you there. Or if you're quick, if you're quick enough, it will just be on the front page, and you can get it from there. And uh, love to have you come out. Love to meet you. There's a lot of you I haven't got a chance to meet. And uh, and so I'd love to – and we've got some new listeners I'd love to meet. If you've never been out to a meetup and you're in the Indianapolis area or anywhere close, it's a great weekend. We have a great time. So if you have some questions on that, send me an email. Love to get you uh, to get you involved in that. We uh, – newsletters coming out this weekend. Hopefully I'll spend some time this weekend writing the newsletter. Some interesting stuff in there. If you haven't signed up for the AverageGuy.TV newsletter, Go ahead and do that today, theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter, and uh, you can see what I've written in the past. And uh, yeah, i just love to have you be a part of that. A couple of them just signed up yesterday. So head out to the newsletter site, get signed up, and uh, then every Saturday morning we are out, or I should say I'm out with Dave Jackson for Ask the Podcast Coach, Saturday mornings 8, I'm sorry, 9.30. I don't know why I can't get that right. 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern, out at askthepodcastcoach.com, as well as sporadically these days, more than not, uh, Surface Geeks and a Home Server Show that uh, over there at, the, at uh, on the Geeks Network, um, you can hear. And you can just, there's way too much of me out there. I'm not, I won't, I won't be surprised if you don't listen to those because you're like, too much Collison. I can just <laughs> only handle so much Collison. So, well, with that, Mike, any, anything, did I miss anything that you can think of? No. Um, Good stuff. Yeah, I think we're things, all good. things are going well over there at uh, Open Mic Night. Yeah, we're actually so this past week was a solo show. My co-host was um, off for the week, and so got back into it and making some different changes, switching over to Wirecast, just some behind the scenes kind of changes to not going to use Google Hangouts anymore. So I like the audio quality coming in from Skype, so we can bring in the Skype, and then I have a. Uh, the pro version of Wirecast to wire everything around. So got that all set up, just waiting for him to join this next week to kind of test it out and get the kinks all worked out. So it's a whole new system for us over here. But, yeah, it's going good. 
All right, good. If you want to listen to that, Tuesday nights, 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern, out at uh, omnpodcast.com. I'm getting, I'm getting better at that. Getting good, yeah. I'm getting good. Got some new uh, Facebook likes on that page, too, so that was nice to see. I don't know oh, if good. there's anyone coming over from here, but if they are, welcome over. So Yeah, yeah. no, I welcome mean, if you're an Apple, if you don't have to be an Apple fanboy, Mike's got some good information. I learn stuff from him all the time. I try to catch that live just as much as I can. Uh, I was actually listening to you live in my car the other day, although it was, it was not in a good spot, so it was jumping in and out. But um, it's uh, I, I love to catch those as much as anything. Kind of gives me some stuff to. Oh, I should share real quick. So real quick before we go, I was um, you know I bought a lightning cable, and this is one of those newer uh, the newer cables. Let's see, hold on, let me make sure I'm getting this right because I could have the name wrong. We had had a big discussion in the Facebook group about cabling, and somebody talked said mono, mono price. They don't like them cheap cables. Other people were having good luck with it or they're having luck with the Amazon basic stuff. But I went out to Amazon, and these are newer, newer tech. This is a a three-footer, short little cable that went in my car. It went from down to the, down in the, with the the power up to my phone where I would plug that in. But what do you notice that's missing up there, Mike? What what do you think is the... The actual connector. (laughs) Yeah, the actual connector is missing because it's, it's... Right here. <laughs> oh. So yeah, not uh, and I wasn't even really. I mean, I was just I'd gotten in the car and I was just trying to plug it in and I got just a little off the the plug in and so it kind of snapped over the top. Should have survived. It didn't. definitely should have survived. I mean, yeah. those things can usually take a beating, but yeah, no, not great. This was a twelve dollar cable. I expect a little more from it. It's a braided. It's a cloth braided cable. It's okay. super short. I expected a little. You know. Mac cables are not, you know, lightning cables are not the cheapest thing in the world. No, right? they're not. No. Um, and I, expected... I do the Amazon basic ones. Like this one right here, it's a six footer. It's running all the way down into my power brick. So it's a, runs all the way up and that's what I use around here. And I've got a few of them and they work out great. Those are yeah. just Amazon basics. Well, and I like the end on that. That's a nice sturdy end. If you, if you're, you know, with the end that's got it, that in there. let me hold on. Let me, let me show that what you got there. Yeah. Hold that up. Yeah. Well, this one's not uh, not so sturdy, and okay. uh, so I logged in. I'm like, well, I wonder if I can get this replaced. It had a month warranty. <laughs> Twelve dollars. That's it's one month for a three foot cord. That lasted one month. That lasted one month. Now, our friends over at Tech Armor, who have provided me a ballistic glass cover for my iPhone as well as a case, and uh, and then a cable, a six foot cable, uh, maybe it could be five foot. That now the five foot cable is going in the car because I, I pull that in and out every day and I want to test that. So for the next couple of weeks, I'll be testing that cable. It's a little too long for the car. And I'll be honest with you, if that cable works out, I'll go back to Tech Armor and say, You got something shorter? Because just need this. It's all yeah. I need. Can you give me this and something really good that will last? And, uh, and we'll go back to them. You can see uh, the tip. You can see right there where the tip just broke off. There's cheap, really cheap plastic in there. So, yeah, I upgraded mine. So I did this one. This one's nine, $9.79, the six-foot one. And then for my car, I just got the Anchor 4 USB port uh, car adapter for charging. And that thing is the best car charger I've had. It doesn't overheat the phone, doesn't send too much power. It has that auto I- that IQ that kind of switches it off once it gets to 100%, so it's not continually pushing that much power. And that thing was only fourteen ninety nine. I couldn't believe that an Anchor product was that inexpensive, but that was... That was a good piece of. That was a good pickup. Oh, good to know. Well, that yeah. that is one of the things I, I try to do on this network is actually test the stuff that I use, and uh, and so we report back to you. I did Larry over at uh, Tech Armor this week ping me. I've had his stuff for about four or five weeks now. I tested the case. I uh, have not got the ballistic glass. I actually cracked. So this is. I think I talked about this last show. Yeah. I've actually cracked the 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 invisible shield. That's on here. I got something right in the corner, and it just ran a hairline crack up the shield. So this weekend, I'm going to pull this one off and warranty it and send it in. We're going to we're going to put the ballistic glass on there from Tech Armor. And he's like, "Have you written the post yet?" I'm like, "No, but I talk about you guys every week, so back off." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, uh, so that's going to go on, and then we'll, we'll we'll write that up as well. But it's one of those things, Mike. I'm I am getting more and more. Um, concerned about podcasters who get something on Thursday, they take it out of the box and talk about it on Friday, and it's just kind of like, uh, come yeah. on, let's. I I really wanna. I mean, that's why that cable. I mean, I bought that cable back in April. I haven't had it that long, or I should say March. 
I haven't had it that long. Right. And the only trend I like about that is like unboxing videos. That's fine. If you're just going to do an unboxing, let's see it. Let's let's cut it open, kind of open it up. That's yeah. something different. But yeah, the full review that people are doing like a day, even, I mean, a week is about the minimum for me. If I have it for a week and I, it's something I use every day, that's something, but usually about a month or even longer. But yeah, I just like to, I, I'm getting more and more. I'm trying to get better at that. I haven't always done that, but yeah. trying to get better at uh, just trying to mess with the stuff a little bit longer or get you guys to mess with the stuff whenever you, you purchase through the Amazon affiliate link. Just go to theaverageguy.tv slash Amazon or Amazon CA for our friend John Zadler in Canada. Uh, that benefits us, and that way we can turn that into product. And I said <laughs> I said this week I would never buy a, I, I need a Raspberry Pi like I need a hole in my head. I, that's on, that's on, it's recorded about a year ago. I bought a Raspberry Pi this week. <laughs> and I Good. know, hey, yours, can I get yours? Because we could use two. Sure. Would yeah. you be okay with that? You'll donate it to the... So we've, I've got the interns at Gallup. We're gonna, I'm gonna see what, I'm gonna turn these things loose on the interns at Gallup and see what we come up with over the summer. So yeah, go for uh, it. Sounds kind the of only fun. thing running on mine is a VPN, but I'll just pop out the memory card and then it's like there's nothing there. So. Get, yeah, we can get a memory card for it. I, I am a little concerned. I ordered the seventy dollar kit and it came. All I did was get a case today that was empty, and it, it oh. came with the receipt like I was supposed to have everything. And I'm like, I don't think someone packaged this right. So I think before I'm gonna have to go back to Amazon and uh, and say, yeah, you sent me the case that's empty and nothing else that came with it. See, my case did come separate though, because I got oh. the same thing. I got the starter kit, and it came in three set three separate shipments. I got okay. the um, was it the power cord, the actual pie, and then the case. So it it might still come. I I don't know, but if it says it's all delivered, then yeah, you might be. Well, I don't know. Sorry, I had to cough there. Oh, yeah. And then I actually, you had convinced me after the whole show, I have my Amazon Echo is on order now, as well as some um, Philips Hue Lux lights, which oh, are not the all-spectrum ones. They're just white lights by Philips Hue, but they're the ones you can control now with uh, with the Echo. So kind of cool. I've been watching some videos of some people who do that with Alexa, and she'll turn off your on and off your lights. So going to play with that, and that doesn't come in until July, though. So. Yeah, so Drashness says, uh, definitely, how do you know it works in real usage if you review it without actually using it as a daily driver? That's a good point. I'm trying to get to the point where I review my stuff in a daily kind of, but it takes a while, right? You can't, you got to, the problem is in the industry, there's so much pressure to be that first reviewer that 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 people put stuff out, and I, nah, I don't need it. Other Jim says that Raspberry Pi quote, the one about the hole in the head, that should be a clamor. And that's, that's again, that's the perfect, maybe somebody could dig that up and clamorize it. I just made that word up for <laughs> me. And then uh, Mike Howard says, what I hate is people who go buy something, review it, and then return it, acting like they're doing it because they didn't like it or it didn't meet their needs. Yeah, that's you can do that too. comes out new. I wonder how many guys do that. I'm sure do. I think I've done it once. Uh, where you buy it, you return it. Actually, for the Surface, I bought a HP Steam, uh, Stream, no, yeah, uh, the 14 inch version. I used it for a day, I returned it, and I bought the Surface. So I've done that once. Just full transparency. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it maybe more than once, but it, one of those kinds of things. I'm not trying to be holier than thou. I'm just trying to say that's one of those things. I really love kind of working with the things and then kind of saying these companies have a good re track record. Speaking of a good track record, we got some great shows coming up for you over the next couple weeks uh, as we as we move forward. Um, John Greenaway is here next week to talk about home automation. So, Mike, we can get a preview of your lights that are coming at awesome. some point. Kind of dig in. John's going to talk about his own home automation setup. Christian comes in, I think, the week after that to talk about um, to talk about the Maple Grove partner setup. So if you're wondering, he's going to come in and talk about hardware and software. And actually, he and I have been working hard at securing that down over the last couple of weeks. Uh, man, WordPress has become a, quite the attack surface, and I've learned a lot about how to attack WordPress just by being on the other end of it and securing my own WordPress sites down. So um, so Christian's coming back, and uh, then we've got the the managing editor over at Silicon Brewery News, Ryan uh, Pendal, is going to come on and talk with us. And then uh, Hanny from Simple Podcast Press, which is a plugin we're using now to get that player that has got the icons below it for download and Spreaker and Mixler and some of those. 
he's going to come on and talk about WordPress development. Just a coincidence that we've got those those WordPress things stacked up, but uh, kind of cool to have him on. And then I'm taking July 2nd off, so that gets us all the way to July. Can you believe it? We're halfway, we're already halfway no. through the year. Oh yeah, my summer's already escaping me, and it just started. I don't know where it's going. I know, I know. It's a, yeah, I know, and then you're going to be back in school, and uh, the pressure will be back on. We are here every Thursday, uh, as I just said, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, yeah, what you got. Dot TV slash live. I want to thanks for listening. Stay around for the post show. Good night, everybody. <laughs>